Come, Nerevar, come. Witness the Nord Enwa Stormcloak Rebellion and the mongrel dogs of the Empire trying to figure out the dominance over a snow desert, populated by Enwa humans with the mentality of orcs, otherwise known as the Nords. Yes, Nerevar, today's sermon encompasses the Skyrim Civil War and the plot holes that come with it. This is the most petty, nonsensical, boring, and anticlimactic conflict I have ever seen. Without further delay, let us begin. First and foremost, it is how the option to join the mongrel dogs of the Empire and Stormcloak and Waz is presented. I have spoken on this on numerous occasions, but what was Emil Perucho thinking? Morrowind, and now Skyrim. Always the wretched Empire begins with its prisoners, seeking to make a pawn of whoever washes ashore. Oh, they were more subtle with you, Nerevar, weren't they? A prophecy to fulfill, a pawn under the guise of a hero. But look at their actions now. Blunt, clumsy instruments, hacking away at honor and tradition in the name of their precious order. No trial, no justice, just the axe waiting for a neck. Can you blame our kin for turning their backs on the dogs of the Empire? Do you find it odd that so many Dragonborns abandon their leash and take shelter beneath Ulfric's banner? The Enwa Nords may be harsh, but at least they are honest in their bigotry. When they hate, at least they are upfront about it, unlike that simpering cur, Emil Pagarillo. Think back, Nerevar. If you had woken as a prisoner aboard an Imperial ship bound for Helgen, if their axe was poised above your neck, would your heart have remained loyal? Would you have seen the Empire as anything other than the tyrant, ready to snuff out a life for the sake of convenience? I think not. Even in your time, the rot had begun to fester. We move on to the second plot hole, where the battles and the quests relating to the Civil War not only did not live up to expectations, but completely shattered any hope for a gripping storyline. What a mockery! When stories are told of the Dragonborn, they speak of a force shaking the very foundations of Tamriel. And what does this conflict amount to? Skirmishes over ramshackle forts, Paltry sieges where a handful of soldiers determine the fate of cities. A war decided not on the battlefield, but in rushed dialogues and backroom deals. Where is the grandeur? The desperate struggle echoing the Velothi exodus. That mewling cur Pagagaran squanders the potential of this war. He would have you believe it's some grand, sweeping strategy, when in truth, it's the work of a lazy scribbler. Modders, mere mortals, show more ambition and respect for the lore than the Empire's own developers dare. Where is the sweeping conflict we deserve? What of the echoes of our shared past? The clash of ideals that should set the holds ablaze? If you are indeed enjoying my sermons, raise your thumbs, subscribe to my sermons, and write on the parchment down below. The third plot hole. Oh, the dreaded peace treaty between both sides. This peace treaty, this mockery atop High Hrothgar, a flimsy bandage on a festering wound. They think their chirping voices and fancy parchments can hold back the tide of history. It will shatter. And I suspect when the dust settles, they'll find the need for one of their precious dragon breaks to explain that both sides won the war at the same time, and it does not matter who won. Seriously, just because a Whiterun Jarl refused to help you, you had to go up there and mediate the worst negotiation in Tamriel. Let me set the stage. The mongrel dogs of the Empire and the Enwa Stormcloaks, meeting on High Hrothgar. Ulfric puts on a show as though the secret dossier by the Thalmor does not exist on him, and wants Elenwyn to leave. Then the temporary peace is negotiated until the dragon incident is resolved. 
I would not have even entertained the idea of peace. Why would Ulfric stop fighting the mongrel dogs while the dragons were rampaging Skyrim? He could have used it to his advantage, but no, he decided to give in and agree to peace. Honestly, you could say that he ultimately is a Thalmor asset, and his priority is not an independent and exclusively Nordenwa kingdom. However, this could also be chalked up to Emil Parmigiano's decision to explain it away in the next Elder Scrolls game. The fourth plot hole is the half-hazard motivations of General Tullius and the prohibition of false god Talos worship due to the signing of the White Gold Concordat. It was the catalyst to this Skyrim war. He corrects Legate Rika when she praises Talos. Nerevar, generally, the signing of the White Gold Concordat was supposed to preserve the Empire and end the stalemate. Honestly, Nerevar, they could have succeeded if the mongrel dogs kept fighting against the Thalmor. The decision to sign the White Gold Concordat led to Hammerfell breaking off from the Empire and single-handedly defeating the Thalmor. If the Red Guards can defeat the Thalmor by themselves, the Nords will probably too. So why did the mongrel dogs sign the Concordat? It does not make any sense. Of course, the Imperial City was going to fall. It is close to the farm tool Elswire and Enwa Valenwood border. What did you expect? Anyhow, all of these decisions and lore do not make any sense. What makes me rage is that some Enwas consider Tullius to be a genius, as though the Thalmor planned to shatter the Empire to conquer it piecemeal. Enwa, they couldn't even conquer Hammerfell. How are they going to conquer everyone, other Enwa? But what is the end result? Hammerfell left. Blackmarsh Farm Tools left. Morrowind left. Skyrim is about to leave, and you blame the Thalmor for your failures. No, this is just terrible writing, excuses, and Tullius being one dumb mongrel dog of the Empire. I cannot take this madness anymore. Calm down. Cheese! Cheese everywhere for everyone! I am calm. I am calm. Fifth and last plot hole is that Ulfric doesn't really have a coherent plan either. How can you revolt without having a coherent plan? Is this how he honors the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned? First, he shouts Torik to pieces, and then he runs off to Mnhelm under the ruse that he is fighting for free Skyrim. He thinks he is a Skyrim version of Dagoth Ur. What a fool he is, I am a god. How can you be a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. Anyhow, Ulfric does not make sense. He wanted to be a greybeard, but left. And when he was sent to liberate Markarth, he liberated it from life. Not that I care for the Reachmen and Waz, but Ulfric unhighlights everything and then makes decisions. This leads me to believe that he had no intentions of starting a war of independence, and instead was interested in Elisif. Think about this Nerevar. Not only that he spares her, but he leaves her as Jarl of Solitude. She offers little resistance. I mean, Nerevar. There are careless whispers going around that she might have also had her hand in this affair. Then again, the false god Boethia wishes her gone. But that quest was cut out due to the decisions made by Emil Parmigiano. If you want me to explore the Elisif and Ulfric romance theory, write on the parchment down below. Dagoth, theory time. But that is all for this sermon. Thank you to those funding the Sixth House operations. Your support is greatly appreciated, and more exciting sermons are in the works, especially the current Charmut Tonya Davis and the adoring fans Connor Runda and Peanut 8421.